Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Michael Hayes and in this series of videos we're helping you guys prepare for the Texas EC6 Subject Core Exam as you get ready to become a Texas educator. In this series right now we are focusing on science and more specifically in this episode we're looking at population coming up next. Okay, if this is the first episode you've seen in this series and you would like to check out more of my lessons, you can click on this card right here in the corner. That will take you to my playlist. That playlist will have all the episodes that I've recorded to this point and in the future uh, listed by topic and by the way they were taught. So that can really help you out as you prepare. You can focus in on what is most important to you. Uh, now, if you cannot see the card I pointed to because your browser does not show it or your viewer, you can check out the description below in this video and I will have it listed there as well. I'm also going to link to the big yellow book. Now the Big Yellow Book is a great resource. I just ordered one last week for myself and I, I think you pay about 50, 60 bucks. It gets you uh, to you in about three or four days and it is an excellent resource. And uh, you cannot buy it in bookstores. You cannot order it on Amazon. You have to order it directly from the publisher. But I would highly encourage you to check that out. Um, also, uh, considering that, you may be preparing and looking at all the vast areas you need to know for your exam. Now, not to discourage you, but I want you to understand that if you've already taken the exam once or twice and uh, you are hoping to come into the next exam and it will be an identical exam as what you already had, it's probably not going to happen. There are a lot of questions in the test bank on the exam and because it's digital, it can feed any of those out to you. And so as you're, as you're taking your exam, you may see some of the same questions, but you may be surprised by the number of questions that may come up that are new. So my suggestion to you guys as you're preparing is understand the overall concept of the items that are being taught to you or that you're researching. Because when you understand the concept and the ideas behind them, then you're more likely to understand any question that comes about in relationship to those ideas. So that's really how I try to focus my videos, is giving a conceptual idea to the topic so that you are prepared for any way the questions might be asked. And so we spend five minutes in each video really focusing in on what's most likely going to be a part of the test so that you can really be knowledgeable in the least amount of time and yet have a broad area of expertise, I guess you could say at that point. Um, you're not going to be an expert and get a job on it as far as uh, you're, all sort of, you're going to be an ecologist after this video. But you will have enough knowledge to be successful on a variety of questions. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to put five minutes on the clock. That will be showing up up here in the corner. And once it gets down to zero, we'll do a quick wrap up and then we will uh, go in the next video where we left off either the same topic with more or going to a new topic. Now my plan in this video is to finish up with populations because I really think I can get it done in five minutes. So let's get started. Five minutes on the clock. So when we talk about populations, we're talking about an individual species. So for example, we have an area in my uh, vicinity that's called Paladar Canyon. It's a miniature version of the Grand Canyon and it's uh, semi-arid and it has a lot of different wildlife in there, different trees and organisms that live there. And so when we look at the Powder Canyon area, and I want to say, let's look at the population of white-tailed deer. I'm kind of ignoring the, the mule deer that might be there. I'm just looking at white-tailed deer. Now if I say I want to look at the population of mule deer, I'm not looking at the white-tailed deer, I'm only looking at the mule deer. Now I could say I want to look at the overall population of all the species of deer. It's not quite a population, but we could kind of rationalize that because we're just looking at deer. Okay. Once we start including additional species in the, in the, in the context, then we're looking at something a little bit different than population. But understand when we look at population, we're also looking at their habitat overall. What are the resources they need to survive? What are they competing for? Is it uh, the water? Is it for the food source? Is it for space? Is it for uh, mating? What, what are they competing for? Because we need to know how that population is able to sustain itself in the, in the environment that they live. So there are different characters, characteristics of populations and so the first thing we're going to look at is population size. So if we look at white-tailed deer, we want to know what is the size of white-tailed deer in the Powder Canyon area where I live. Maybe not the whole thing because Powder Canyon extends for hundreds and hundreds of miles, but maybe for just a certain segment of Powder Canyon. So we do a quick count and we figure out what they are. And we want to know is that population a healthy size or an unhealthy size. It could be unhealthy because it's too small and they might be weak and sick. Or it might be unhealthy because it's too big and there's not enough resources for it. So animals are even starving when the populations are too large. There's usually a balance somewhere in the middle that is a good equilibrium for the population. And that is a good healthy environment. So uh, population size is very important when we look at uh, ecosystems and environments. 
Now, population density, I kind of touched on that a little bit. How big is that, uh, that species? So let's look at maybe the skunks. Are they a large size, small size, mid size? What is it? Um, so we start doing counts. And if they often wander and they migrate and they move around a lot, then we might take an aerial photo or we might tag a few and figure out where they are based on uh, you know, technology and say, okay, well, there's so many in this area, so we could assume that there is this many in all the areas of this uh, canyon, and so we could do some math and figure that out. So population density allows us to know whether or not it's a healthy or unhealthy size with the, of the population within the environment. Now, limiting factors are what's going to keep that uh, population of organism in check. Obviously, it's going to be food. If there's not enough food, then there's not going to be enough uh, uh, resources to go around. Uh, the, the breeding of those animals may start uh, coming down because they don't want to have more offspring to compete with. Now, you know, animals want to survive too, so they're not going to intentionally breed to put more organisms in the environment um, to be able to compete with. Also, they're competing against other organisms in the, in the food web that want the same resources, all the other grass eaters or leaf eaters that those deer might be competing with, against. So limiting factors are what keeps it in check. If it's a drought, let's say that the water is really uh, scarce in the area, that's going to be a limiting factor. It's going to cause the populations of most organisms to decrease. Plants will die. Insects will not be able to have the food that they need, so they will die off or migrate. Um, so limiting factors help to uh, keep the ecosystem in check with the different populations of animals or organisms in the environment. Now carrying capacity is another t uh, key word we want to understand. Carrying capacity is the maximum number of organisms that an area can support. So there's only so many a deer that can live there before they start starving themselves out or they start competing too highly with another organism. Uh, that also brings in predators. If uh, the organism sizes get too large, then predator populations start to increase to reduce the number of the prey. And it's just vice versa. If the, uh, if the predator population decreases, then the prey population goes up and they kind of keep each other in check. Again, another limiting factor. But the carrying capacity is what is the maximum number of organisms of a certain population that can live in the environment that we're talking about. Now communities are much like your community. When you think about your community, it's all the different aged people that live there, it's all the uh, pets that they might own, it's the trees in your environment. So a community is everything that's kind of together. Now I think when you're thinking community, you're just thinking people, and that's probably about accurate when we're talking about human communities. But communities in, uh, in environmental situations are all the organisms that live together, all the population of deer, raccoons, skunk, uh, reptiles, amphibians, plants, insects, they all make up a community in their environment. Now I've kind of been intentionally leaving out ecosystem. Ecosystem, oh, we're just about there. We're gonna stop here in just a second after ecosystem. Ecosystem is uh, all the living and non-living factors of the environment. So we call those abiotic and biotic. So abiotic would be the non-living things, biotic are living things, like in biology. That's a good way to remember that, the study of life. So abiotic things in the ecosystem would be rocks, soil, temperature, water, those types of things. Biotic factors would be all the living things, any insects, plants, animals, uh, birds, all of those things wrapped up into one would be the ecosystem. So we have different kinds of ecosystems. We have like um, aquatic ecosystems like oceans or rivers or lakes. Uh, we have uh, ecosystems like the desert or uh, tundra or taiga. Um, all these different kinds of eco rainforests is another one. Ecosystems mean what is, if you think about it in your head, that ecosystem would be a rainforest. So we think about the Amazonian jungle, something like that. Uh, maybe we think about things in Central America or, uh, uh, you know, rainforest type areas. Uh, tundra, we'd be thinking about Antarctica or maybe even uh, the top parts of North, the North Pole or Alaska would be tundra area. So ecosystems means the environment and everything within that environment, okay? All right, man, that was a lot to absorb. We did it pretty well in five minutes, just a little, a little bit over. I apologize for that. So if you need to rewatch this video to catch on some of the highlights, feel free to do that. Um, and again, if, uh, if you like this video, please show a like on, on here. I would appreciate that. Give me a thumbs up. Also, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe and also click on the notification bell. That will let you know when new videos post. And uh, again, comment below. I would love to hear what you have to say about the videos. How are they helping? What can I do to improve the videos? Um, what questions do you have? Maybe on populations that I didn't cover and you would like to know more. Please let me know in the description or the comments below and I will get back with you. Again, I thank you for watching and tune in next time on Mr. Hayes' YouTube channel. We'll see you.